Finally, <laughs> <laughs> akan punya boss.
Walking simulator. Right. This is Lionel Snell. If you're hearing this, it's because you turned on the developer commentary for my latest game, my <laughs> magnum opus, really, called Walk. The scene you're looking at is the model of my childhood bedroom. This right here is where Super Weasel Kid was conceived. Take it in. And that's Mr. Shrewd. The two always made little squeaks and chirps at each other. I like to imagine they were talking. 
Shrewd would be this wise parental figure giving advice to Weasel Kid. That weasel was my favorite pet. I called him... Yeah, you guessed it. Weasel Kid. One of my favorite games at that age was Cooking Granny. I thought Chef Bryce was the coolest. <laughs> you know how that turned out. My original plan for Walk was to have it be an almost non-interactive experience, just allow the player to explore and contemplate. I did some market research though, and well, that kind of game was falling out of vogue. Not much money in it, so I jammed in some real gameplay. I thought that since this is about my life as a developer, why not show the player what it's like to make a game? I mean, this is like a way dumbed down version of the stuff I do, but, but to the average gamer it's a challenge. I remember when I first got the jumping code right and hooked it up to a keyboard button. Oh, that dopamine rush electrified my childhood brain. Irving came as part of the GameWorks package. I was a little hesitant about using an AI at first, but he became really helpful. It didn't take long to realize how much I depended on Irving. He assured me that it was easy for him to come up with enemies and non-player <laughs> characters for me, so I let him do his job. <laughs> That's funny. Irving told me we couldn't get the original Super Weasel Kid for Walk. Something about losing the files. Kind of a shame, I guess. Let 
чем? The success of Super Weasel Kid paralyzed me. I tried starting a few different games, but I kept comparing them to my big hit. What would people think if I put out something that was worse? That I had just gotten lucky the first time? That I'm a one-trick pony? Eventually I settled on making a sequel. Super Weasel Kid Radical Road. Mr. Shrewd was getting older, both in Radical Road and real life. The older I got, though, the less I really cared. I tried to learn guitar, but I couldn't motivate myself to practice. There was something about the immediacy of game development that I couldn't get out of that thing. I'd been playing a lot of fighting games at that age, always loved those. I wanted to make one, but I wasn't quite as talented as I would become. So that's why I just had to add combat to Radical Road. I thought it was just exhilarating to beat the shit out of that Karunda, but the critics really came down on me for that part. It left me feeling like I had no idea what people wanted. Radical Road was met with mixed reviews, and it made me panic. I resolved to put away Super Weasel Kid forever and try something new. To top it off, my shrew died. Oh. Mr. Shrewd was long dead at this point. Shrews just don't live that long. Weasel Kid actually escaped, if you can believe it. I took him outside one time, and he slipped out of my hands and ran into my neighbor's rose garden. I searched for hours, but the garden was pretty big, and the thorns were painful. I'd get emails once in a while, people asking to make deals, wanting to capitalize on my IP. It had been a couple of years now since Radical Road, and one day I just said, fuck it, fine. I sold the franchise to the highest bidder. When I saw what they did with Super Weasel Kid, I felt a little part of myself die. But I was 18 years old and loaded. It was actually one of the best years of my life. The next scene is based on my foray into larger scale game development. The plan? Make a fighting game. Not everyone remembers, but I started the combat arena. Okay, just a jump a little bit higher. You're almost there. Anyways, as I was saying, I don't get nearly enough credit for starting one of the most popular fighting game franchises in history. Uh, 
Ah, uh, it's a beauty, isn't it? I put my weasel bucks to use and bought this place with cash. Then I hired a team. I hired my childhood friend Carla to work at my new studio. She was halfway through a degree in computer science, but I offered her a huge salary. Hard to say no to that. Carla's first order of business was to tell me that I had designed too many male characters. I tried to tell her that Steambot Willy was genderless, but she insisted. So I created Chandrel while she worked on Sado. That eye. Mm. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Ever since Carla created Sado, I'd get these weird, annoying bugs in my games. And I'm still getting them in Walk. exactly sure what Carla did while she was creating Cisco. <laughs> she told me some mumbo jumbo about pushing Gameworks to its limits. That character was eerie to say the least. door. That's exactly what it looked like in real life. Solid teak, hand carved, gold nameplate. I was hiring people who were twice my age. I had to make sure they understood who was in charge. Making Combat Arena gave me my first glimpse into the well, to be frank, the stupidity and immaturity of gamers. Every damn day we got complaints about how this or that character was overpowered, underpowered, too boring. Ugh, I never wanted to work on a fighting game again. Good. Kaki kayu AI three. Very easy. Lagi.
Can. I have to admit though, coding the punches and kicks was everything I had hoped it would be. I'd sit in my office for hours just watching these characters go to town on each other. Sometimes they'd look like they could actually feel it. Blocking is too good, replace it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultimate mood. You are here. God, it was such a relief to ship that game. I hated it by the end. But since my fingers had touched it, it turned to gold. I still had my contract with Game Funa, so I sold the franchise for another boatload of cash. Game Funa. Game Funa. Now that my studio was bigger, richer, unstoppable, it was time to take on something huge. An epic fantasy adventure that only a studio like mine could accomplish. This is when I made Secrets of Legendaria. There was a heated debate about which character should be the star of Secrets of Legendaria. In the end, Carla won over the studio, so we went with Chandrell. Huh, yeah, who cares what I think, right? <laughs> I put everything into that game. I hired the best programmers, the best designers. I burned through my fortune fast. But this game was going to be epic, goddammit. I paid the biggest gaming streamer to play it live, with hundreds of thousands watching. <laughs> it 
Yeah, you like that switch mechanic? Pretty cool, huh? You've still got it. One hit all. Nice. <laughs> the stream had been going all right with the odd hitch or two, but things took a terrible turn for the worst right near the end. <laughs> it was chaos. I might need it.
Sorry. Mm. Secrets of Legendaria bombed. Carla had left bugs in there intentionally to sabotage me. It must have been that, because everything went wrong. And everyone saw it live. The game had no hope of recouping costs, so I took funds from the severance packages and ran. I couldn't even afford my apartment anymore. I moved south to find some cheaper real estate. Living in the desert was a miserable experience. I blasted the AC all day, but I was somehow always sweating. I started working on Wasteworld here. It was supposed to be my great comeback. I would wake up, sit in front of my computer, and just stare at the screen with my hands beside the keyboard. After about an hour of that, I'd blow off the rest of the day playing some online game. Sure, I'd sometimes accomplish something, but then I'd reward myself with some social media time and would wind up reading articles about myself. They weren't kind to me. finished Waste World. I wanted this area of walk to reflect that experience, so I left it half finished. That also saved me some development time. <sighs> I'm pretty sure half of those levels were unbeatable, but I just didn't care anymore. forsaken place. Uh, most days it kept me inside.
Somehow, the more I needed to finish that game, the more I avoided doing it. My parents would call every once in a while to ask how it was going, but I'd just lie. The final straw was those idiotic modders. They took my half-finished game and made a goddamn mockery of it! Aliens? In a post-apocalyptic Wild West? It made no sense. If I couldn't finish the game myself, I sure as hell wasn't going to let them do it for me. modders really fired me up. It was just what I needed to bring those low lives to task. Those gormless basement dwellers were going to pay ever ten <laughs> Is that you? Oh no, it's not you. <laughs> and that's how I programmed the blood particles. I think it really contributed to the visceral pleasure of Vicious Galaxy 2, making it the obvious standout in the series. My only gripe with the game was the designs of the main characters. I'm too old! But everyone wanted the same boring space marine from Vicious Galaxy. Eventually I got my wish. There was some sort of breach within GameWorks and a lot of was lost. I had to create a new squad of player characters from scratch after that. Irving got weird. He told me that I might be in danger. Danger from what? <laughs> we find ourselves at the climax of Walk. The player has to use everything they've learned to solve the ultimate puzzle and arm the bomb. Go on, you can do it. 
Yes! This probably looks daunting. Switches, those creepy eye things, and a splitter all in one puzzle. But it's the last one, I promise. Okay.
You know, I had to lower the difficulty of that puzzle like 10 times before the average player could solve it. But great job, you figured it out. <laughs> you win. <laughs> and that brings us to the present. Well, I should say, the near future. The other indie games coming out right now are crap, so Walk is a shoe-in for Game of the Year. This scene is a little glimpse into what's to come. The end. Thanks for playing, I guess. Um, at this point, you just have to walk toward the white door frame and the credits roll. And, hey, I'm glad you turned on the developer commentary. I hope my story was as much an inspiration to you as it is to me. This is Lionel Snill, signing off. Snill. Did you get all that? All right, good. Let's get out of here. Who be a tender?
Aquí. 